All right, back with a uh, new math section. This is going to be extra math three. Uh, again, we started at 10. We're down to three now. I'm going to try to solve these a little bit more systematically. So if you want to see the earlier versions of this where I break it down more, try to jump back to test 10 and work your way down here. Uh, so when I see nine, I immediately identify it. We have two linear equations with an unknown variable. Uh, they are going to say something like no solution. Uh, maybe they say infinitely many solutions, right? We know what these mean now. Infinitely many mean they, means they would be the same line. No solution means they're parallel lines, and I would just get their slopes. Here it is. I see no solution, so I just get their slopes real quick. Add the 3y to the other side, and I get kx uh, minus 4. And divide that by 3. So I have my slope for this side. Let's get our slope for the other side. Uh, add the 5y to the other side. 5y is equal to 4x. Uh, minus 7, divide that by 5, and then now I know that these two are equal, so maybe in between, hmm, I need a little bit of room, over here to the right, you can see over to the right, uh, we'll say k over 3 is equal to 4 over 5, 5k is equal to 12, k is equal to 12 over 5. Not too bad, right? Um, let's just make sure that's right, yes. So yeah, so uh, those ones we're always just going to, um, again, you can throw them in Desmos and use your slider to get them to look parallel, but since for the free response ones, we're solving them anyway, I don't mind having just a, a unilateral approach of just always solving them. But let's try number 10 here. Let's, uh, let's see, we have uh, a parabola intersects a line at y equals 25. That's easy. I'm going to pull up Desmos, right? Uh, let's grab Desmos and check this problem out. So first function, x minus 11 to the second in parentheses. Second equation, y equals 25. And uh, let's try to see what's going on. Right there, I see my two intersection points. Can you see it on here? You can. And it looks like it's going to be that and that. And they are asking for... Let's hide Desmos real quick. They're asking for what is the length of AB. It looks like we're traveling. So remember, length of AB, we want to go in the x direction. So we're at 6x to 16x. That looks like it's going to be 10. So again, uh, what would have usually been, you know, maybe more complicated, uh, to, to I, I could plug the 25 into the other equation and, and factor and solve for x. Throw it in Desmos. I get my two x values, find the distance between the two. Number 11, oh, this is, uh, this is a, a really good problem. Um, before I even look down below, before I even allow down below to confuse me, there's three equations I can make right off the bat, right? I know that y is equal to u, they are vertical angles. I know x is equal to t, they are vertical angles, and w is equal to z. Um, I could make more complicated equations, like I could say x, y, z is equal to 180, stuff like that. But down below so far, I only see 1 to 1, so I, I don't want to get too crazy yet. And let's see what we need to know. They say if, okay, so they give us an equation. So if x plus y is equal to u plus w. And then they're asking this. So, so it looks like I need to eventually boil this down to like 1 to 1. So can I plug anything into that equation? So I could plug in u for y. So let's let's try this one first, right? So if I plug in, or either way, y for u, I get x plus u equals u plus w. And then that should, uh, I can subtract u from both sides, and I get x is equal to w. So that would be a new equation. That wouldn't be like a redundancy. I get w is equal to z, which should be equal to x, which should be equal to t. So these two um, kind of like bond together. They're all equal to each other. And then I'll erase that and I'll see if I can plug something else in. So for a second equation, I could try uh, if I plug in x or t, well, nothing crosses out, right? If I plug in a t for that, I can't cross out. w and z, if I plug in a z, it's not going to cross out. So this is a cool problem because. Uh, I kind of just have to test each one. I test the first one, it, there's a canceling out because there's a Y and a U on both sides. 
the next two don't cancel anything out. So for this, uh, does one work x equals z? Yes, that's true. Um, does two work uh, y equals w? No. And does z equal t? Yes. So we're looking for one and three. It looks like it's going to be b for number 11. Good problem. And we'll try to finish this page. Uh, oh, number 12. Okay, I remember this one. So let's try it. When I look up above here, uh, I never want to forget this A, whether it's standard form, whether it's vertex form, whether it's factored form like this, this A is going to be, you know, my multiplier, my does my graph go up or does it go down, right? So A is this non-zero constant that's out in front of our equation. Uh, the graph of the equation uh, is a parabola with vertex C, D, which of the following is equal to D. Okay. So, hmm, I feel like there's multiple things I can consider here. Uh, so I, I, I'm tempted already. I see an x, y point, and I could plug in c, d for my x and my y. But there's actually even more information than I'm kind of letting on so far. What are my two solutions to this function, right? Well, it would be 2 for the first set of parentheses, and it would be negative 4 for my second set of parentheses. And parabolas are symmetric. So what does a factor of 2 and a factor of negative 4 tell us? That tells us uh, that my vertex is going to be at negative 1 for my x, right? So uh, negative 1 is between 2 and negative 4. It's right dead in the middle. So I could actually skip. Uh, one of these letters, I could say uh, this is going to be actually negative 1d, right? So it just kind of helps because it's going to make it less variables. So I know when x is negative 1, I'm going to get d for my y because that is the y, uh, the y coordinate of my vertex. So now I plug everything in. d is equal to a uh, x minus minus 1. So I think that's going to be 3. And then negative 1 plus 4, that's going to be 3. Huh. Did I? Because I'm getting all negatives here. So negative 1. Oh, it's negative 1 minus 2. So, so negative 1 minus 2 is plus negative. So this should be a negative 3. That's fine. And I knew that looking at the answers, it's going to have to be negative. So I should get D is equal to negative 9A here. Uh, let's just make sure that's right. Yep, A for this one. Fantastic problem. Uh, yeah, always for these kind of you know you know weirder problems, always try to figure everything out. If I plug in C and D there, then I won't be able to solve because I'll also have C in my uh, in my answer, and they and they want a number for C, which we figured out because our vertex will be t between our two factors. And maybe the finale here. What about thirteen? Oh, there looks. Looks like there's a lot going on here. So I already know what to do. Again, if you're practicing all these problems, you see this, you know. I see on one side a single fraction, and on the other side of my equal sign, not a single fraction. I always am trying to mirror these variable-filled complex equations by saying left side equals right side. Let's match their formats, right? So this already has a denominator of that. This has the same denominator. This doesn't. Let's get that to have the same denominator. Let's get a different color. So uh, negative x or 8x minus 3 over 1. And we're going to multiply this by ax minus 2, ax minus 2. And all this is going to do is help get us common denominators, right? Uh, we should get negative 8ax squared. Uh, oh, yeah, so we're going to have to FOIL here. So just, just if it helps, you know, throw your parentheses. So I did my first. I'm going to have to do my second. So plus 16x minus 3ax and then uh, plus 6 there. And I don't care about the denomin denominators because they're all going to be the same anyway. So now I would just take this. Um, I include this part as well. So I could say like uh, minus 53 at the end here. 
and then I know now this is going to be equal to this. So without even really having to do much more work, I could just compare my numbers. I could say negative 8a is going to be equal to 24. So again, if you've done you know my previous practice tests, you know we've seen so many examples of this. I just compare the coefficients. Um, so I think that would make a negative 3. And let me just scroll down to make sure that's right. Yep, so it's going to be B for this one. So all I did was figure whatever number I plug in here to get me positive 24, that would be negative 3. So still a really good problem. Um, but yeah, if you go through these practice tests, the whole point is that you see five, six versions of it. So when you see the seventh version of it, you know exactly how to solve it. This will be the end of this uh, part one, and I'll start back with part two soon.